Well, hi everybody, welcome back. It's been a while since I've had a video up. I haven't felt much like doing any editing lately, so uh, I've been building. I haven't been doing any videos. Uh, back in February, I started another build after I finished the uh, ZC Top Eliminator. I started this build about the middle of February, and at the end of February, my back went out, and uh, my back was sore. I had spasms for about a month. Fortunately, I was able to get three or four um, physio treatments before we were quarantined. And of course, we were uh, quarantined in the house with the uh, virus, kind of lost interest in doing a lot of things. Until in March, we did the, um, the Bandai group build, and then the uh, eggplant group build. That kind of got me going again, so I got uh, back onto this model uh, after I finished that. And I'm uh, almost wrapping it up now, uh, just putting the finishing touches on it. And uh, I realized I have about three or four videos to put out uh, from start to finish to get it uh, up to speed. So I uh, hope you stay tuned to see what uh, is coming next. And uh, let me turn this around here. I'll show you what I've been working on. So as you can see, it's the Polar Lights Superman kit. It's a snap together kit. It was issued in 2013. I bought it a couple of years ago for my birthday and decided now would be a good time to build it. Everything's molded in blue and it all fit together very well. I used liquid cement on the seams and pushed them together so that it required very little sanding and puttying to uh, clean up the seams. Except for on the cape, there was a, quite a large crease down the center with the, the, ca the cape where the two halves go together. That required a fair bit of puttying and sanding. Starting with the base, I sprayed the whole thing with Rust-Oleum 2X Black Primer. Then I taped it off, ready for the chrome paint on top, but I had to wait for a warmer day to get outside and put that on. Next I worked on the chains. I noticed in the instructions the numbers were wrong. Number 22 should be number 20. With lots of clamps, I glued the two halves of each section of chains together. Then I primed them with Vallejo Light Gray Primer. Superman's body components go together very well, except for a slight seam around his shoulders. I don't like doing seam work, and I tried a combination of wood filler putty and um, some Vallejo acrylic. It's water soluble and just smooth it with my finger. The cape has quite a noticeable gap and required a lot more work. I've got the seams all puttied, and I've sanded it with uh, 400 and 600 grit, and I've gone over everything with a cloth with rubbing alcohol to clean it all up and I think it's ready for the primer now. I primed him with the Vallejo light gray primer using the airbrush. Once we got a warm day I used the Krylon rattle can to spray the chrome paint over the base. The chrome came out looking good so once that dried I taped off the symbol and sprayed folk art black metallic paint over the rest of the base. So on the Superman base, I put a few more coats of the uh, Folk Art Metallic Charcoal Black. It's got a little bit of a gold flake in it. And then uh, it's been sitting for about five or six weeks with the uh, tape, masking tape on the silver part. After I pulled the tape off, it's got some residue. I think it pulled some of the chrome paint off and uh, left some marks and residues there. So I think what I'm going to do is just uh, brush on some craft silver paint on there to try and clean it. Hopefully, hopefully it'll clean it up a little bit. For the uh, chains that Superman is breaking, after painting them with the lime green craft paint, I dry brushed on some Craft Smart Emerald green. Um, it's a, a matte metallic acrylic paint just to give it a bit of depth and uh, a more metallic look. Now back to the Superman build. Uh, I've gone over some of the seams again uh, with some uh, wood filler. That's what I use and just because uh, it's water soluble try to smooth it out. I haven't worried too much about the seams here. That'll be covered up with the cape. The seams on his arms and legs have uh, pretty much disappeared and I've given it another coat of primer. I have Alejo light gray primer the cape, though, has quite a heavy seam right down the middle, and uh, it doesn't seem to want to come out very well. Um, uh, so I'm, I'm getting a little frustrated with it. I'm not really good at doing seam work and puttying, so uh, I may just leave it and uh, get on with the paint. So the primer's on, and at this stage I'm looking to get the colors ready. 
Now my neighbor Joe next door, he's the one who got me started into modeling in the first place. He's got a lot of modeling magazines, mostly aeronautic stuff. But he did have this one, which he loaned me, Amazing Figure Modeler, issue number 57 from 2014, with the Superman kit on the cover. Now there's an article inside where they built, one of the fellows has built this, and uh, you'll notice the coloring on the cover art. What he's tried to do is replicate that. So he shows the gluing the pieces together the way we've done that, filling the seams, uh, painting it all and putting the decals on. Then what he's decided to do is to paint it to match the uh, card, the comic book art with this, this black shadowing. He's decided to hand paint that on. So that's what he's doing here. He's painting these black details on with a brush under the chin, around the uh, muscles and on the the um, waist and so on. So what I decided I'd like to do, I didn't want to do that the same way, but what I decided to do was to put some pre-shading on. So after a little more seam work and a second coat of primer, I'm ready to put on some Steinle Res Black Primer to highlight the pre-shading. So rather than adding the black highlights after the paint goes on, I decided to do pre-shading with the black Steinal Res primer around the same areas. To see how this turns out, stay tuned for the next update.